Welcome to Homeschool Conversations with Humility and Doxology, a series of chats with real life homeschool moms, dads, and other educators. I'm Amy Sloan, a second generation homeschool mom of five, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. You can find the show notes for this conversation at humilityanddoxology.com. Today, we're going to be chatting with Susan Evans. Susan, thank you for being with us. Thank you. I well, love to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad to get to meet you kind of in person over, over the computer. Um, Susan is a lively homeschool conference speaker. She's been an educator for two decades, first as a teacher and now as a homeschool mom. She runs a huge unit studies membership site for homeschoolers which includes thousands of video demonstrations, downloadables, and hands-on learning articles. She also teaches creative writing classes on DVD, where she wears costumes for different time periods to teach historical fiction writing. I love that idea. I have all sorts of nice, embarrassing pictures of me as a homeschool student in costume. <laughs> <laughs> To find out more about Susan, um, visit her website, susanevans.org, and you'll find hundreds of free hands-on learning articles and videos. And I've been enjoying watching many of her videos on YouTube over the past few months, and so I had to get her on here because I just love her enthusiasm and creativity. <laughs> Susan, could you just start by telling us a little bit about your background, your family, and how you came to start homeschooling? Well, um, I grew up in Guatemala, which is in Central America, so um, I'm fluent in Spanish. My, my dad was a professor down there, and so, um, and then I became a teacher, and I was a teacher for seven years, including two years in London, England, Bye. and um, <laughs> And I was a drama director too, which you, you kind of get a feel for the type of person I was before I got married. And then um, I got married and I had kids. And so it seemed a natural progression from there. Um, and something that you would appreciate, because I've seen um, a lot of like poetry kind of things on your, um, on your blog and your page and everything. Um, I had my, my oldest son when he was age two, um, I had him memorize, he, okay, so I quoted a bunch of um, scripture and like a Shakespeare sonnet and a bunch of stuff like that, just famous things that I wanted my, my babies to know. And I did it into a cassette, even though it was outmoded even then, okay. And, um, and so my two-year-old um, from the back seat just rattled off a whole Shakespeare sonnet, word perfect, yeah. Yeah. okay? So it seemed natural that <laughs> with a kid quoting Shakespeare that I should homeschool, you know? Yes. <laughs> a natural progression. <laughs> <laughs> right. And how would you describe your homeschool personality or philosophy? Has it changed at all over the years or? Um, I have always done unit studies, and uh, the reason for that is that when I was a teacher, thematic learning was greater retention, it was more fun, um, the, the unit studies approach has more hands-on things, um, and so it's more um, experiential, and when something is experienced, it is actually um stays with you for the rest of your life instead of just having information that you just put on a test and then forget about so yeah unit studies is definitely my style and it's eclectic you know i love charlotte mason i love classical i pull from all of the of the styles and then um cr you know have it in a thematic way i even use textbooks in a thematic way believe it or not yeah, so for anyone who isn't really sure what a unit study approach is, you kind of mentioned a few important words, like experiential, thematic. So you would take one theme or idea and then relate all the subjects around that one theme. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. And I use, I mean, like ancient Egypt, for example. So you have, um, you know, 
you have books about it, about different topics like, like mummies and mummification and then pyramids and things like that. And you delve deep into each one instead of skimming the surface like a textbook does. I'm mostly anti-textbook, except I can't really say that anymore because with high school, you do have to use some textbooks, especially with, uh, well, math all the way through, but, um, but sciences and things like that, you have to really in order to get the proper credit. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine doing like pre-calculus without a textbook. That sounds like a <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's what I like my teacher books and the solution guides. I'm like, well, let's see why this is the right way. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I love, as I mentioned earlier, I've loved seeing your YouTube videos and posts. Recently, you've been describing some of the creative, fun ways you and your kids have been learning high school psychology. So is creative hands-on learning only for little children? I, I can see that you use it even with your high schoolers. So how is it possible to still learn kind of in innovative ways with our older students while, um, you know, still making sure that we're, we're being faithful to give them a good quality, you know, high school education? Okay, so yes, um, definitely hands-on is for high school. And, um, and it, I would start with what I just said was um, about science, that I do use textbooks for high school for science, but I use it, I make it into a unit study and I make it thematic. So when my older kids, so I have four kids, they're all teenagers right now. My youngest is 14, as you could see by the um, psychology videos, but, um, and all the way to 19. So 14 to 19 right, right now, as we're speaking. So um, um, anyways, so, so they enjoyed doing um, the, the hands-on learning uh, with the younger kids. Um, for example, when we did um, high school anatomy, <clears throat> I taught the two older kids who were ready for it. And then the younger kids, um, we did other hands-on things with all of us together. So we did each system. A different week or whatever and so they had um, the full learning all together even though they weren't taking tests for the older kids or whatever so so we did hands-on all the way through then when they were all in high school yes they were all in high school at the same time um, although my my daughter was like maybe 10 she was doing high school government and um, okay so on YouTube we have hands-on homeschool government as well that you can follow. How a bill becomes a law, for example, we have my daughter's dressed up as a bill and we have a pompous president. <laughs> uh, this was back from our previous president, but it's even more appropriate now with, that, with an afro. <laughs> anyway, and a top hat on top of that. It was just hilarious. And every single scene we made it as short as possible to understand like you know all the basics of uh u.s government and it was it was hilarious it was fun they're all hands and they made it they decided what they wanted to do so they're internalizing the those concepts so it's not just for science it's not just for government there's history we do reenactments um it, it, if you're if you're lazy or tired, you can go to a reenactment. You know, you don't have to actually do it yourself like I do. You can actually attend um, like a Civil War reenactment or a uh, medieval, um, you know, with those Renaissance fairs and just any time period. You could probably find something in a city nearby or in your own city um, to do. And um, let's see what else, like Dave Ramsey, we did finances. Um, there's a teen thing, you can Google it. Um, it's really good, it's very hands-on as well. And that's math, okay. Um, the Iliad, the Odyssey, so these are literature. We reenacted those, and so those classics stay with you forever. I know you would appreciate that. Yeah. So I threw that in. <laughs> um, so yes, definitely. And I mean, like Driver's Ed, Okay, imagine not doing hands-on for driver's ed, okay? Uh, you have to be able to do it in order to truly master it. Um, so 
in the same way any content learning needs to be practiced and um so yeah, yeah. i love that some of my favorite memories from my own homeschool years are when our family would go I mean, we would turn our vacations they were always like history field trips essentially and we <laughs> go places and i just i love that and i love that it does you even mentioned it crosses the ages so even if you have older kids you have younger kids who aren't necessarily doing the high school level work or whatever right. it's still something that everyone can enjoy together and have those shared memories and the shared inside jokes and and you're just learning kind of wherever each individual child is ready yeah. for it yeah it's so fun well, let me ask you specifically about this recent series you've completed. I guess you've wrapped it up now, the yeah. high school psychology series. And what kind of made you want to do a high school psychology course? And why do you think it's important to include that in, in your students' uh, curriculum plan? Uh, the really good thing um, about learning psychology is that you understand people. This is something that, um, you know, will help in uh, understanding like body language, communication, like nonverbal communication, um, the types of personalities. So you don't expect people to be exactly like you. You enjoy different types of people like choleric, sanguine, you know, introvert, extrovert, like these kind of things. Um, so you learn to, um, to work with people and not assume that they're wrong about their personality you know um there's a lot of people a lot of adults who you know look down on people because of certain personality things that's part of their who they are they maybe they thrive um alone so they need some time alone which is kind of hard in this quarantine that we're in right now uh <laughs> you can never be alone if, especially if you have a big family so do you recharge around other people? Do you recharge alone? Now, you know, <clears throat> I don't know if it's evenly distributed, but you can't, um, you can't force people that are one type of way to, to um, function nonstop in a certain way or whatever. Anyway, this is helpful uh, all kinds of ways. For example, um, future careers, like you should choose something that's around other people if you're a people person, because you would be miserable if you were in whatever. Um, what other types of things did we cover? There's some things that are, um, you know, like some of the things of Freud and <clears throat> Jung that are uh, like off, uh, but, but you can uh, study some of the things that are true. For example, the subconscious and uh, things that have happened to you that you no longer, um, that like you don't have a conscious memory of but have formed you to who you are and that helps you to have compassion on people because maybe the way that you react towards something is because of something that happened <clears throat> to shape that reaction and so um it just helps with friendships it helps with understanding people um you know a lot of things are common sense but then other things are just really really interesting like existentialism and you know uh, my daughter was very interested in, and it, it was just very very interesting it's kind of like philosophy it helps you to think deeply and thinking deeply is good because then you think through so what is it that I um, you know believe about this what is actually true and and then comparing that against scripture if you're a Christian and <clears throat> you know and there's a lot of, of scripture that came to my mind as I was doing uh, this uh, psychology course. The psychology course I I'm using is from Seven Sisters, by the way. It's a Christian course. Okay. So it, um, it helps to, to be taught in a, um, from the Christian perspective, because like, like some things about Freud, for example, are not at all good. <laughs> and I would explain it to my daughter like, you know, um that that uh people misinterpret love um the, the love that they want um or that they need from another person they misinterpret that as romantic love and it wasn't or whatever and then so then it goes down a a wrong path um like with um parent type of things you know the right. 
Oedipus or whatever. So we just skimmed across those and then delve deeper into the more fun things like lying on a couch and talking about your life and, and how it made you feel. And then you, you feel better if you can understand a situation and, <clears throat> and all the things surrounding that situation so that you can, you know, heal from, from different things that happen. Like, like um, uh, maybe if, if your son or daughter has rejection from a peer and the friend walks away from them or whatever, um, which is something that's happened to one of my kids. And um, so then talking it through so that it doesn't make them not want to open up ever again, you know? So healing, um, you know, psychology does help in all these different areas. So. Oh yeah. I think, you know, it's so interesting to be able to understand the way different people think and process is so important because it helps us, it helps us love people better instead of expecting everyone to be just like us and then, you know, assigning bad motives to, you know, their differences. Instead, right. it gives us the compassion and really the humility too, to realize that we're not the center of the universe yes. um, and that the way we see the world isn't the only way to see it. Um, and to, you know, to be able to communicate better, to be able to love people better. And then the history of psychology, I mean, every, all of these different philosophers and psychologists, sort of the different ways things have, um, have interwoven through the years, I mean, it all influences where psychology is going and where we are now and where it will be in the future. So to really understand even the vocabulary that sort of can be thrown around. You have to understand where it came from. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, what were some of the fun ways you were able to to bring your hands-on creative enthusiasm to something that seems like a very serious topic? Yes. Well, um, like for example, the the first chapter was about the mind and the and the actual brain and how it how it works and how it functions. So we did a, a Plato brain. And then we did a Plato neuron, and then we did um, a vegetable brain, which is funny. <laughs> we did that on video. Um, all these can be found for free. On, um, I'm talking about my videos for psychology are on my blog and on my um, YouTube channel. Um, and I'll link uh, all those up too in the show yeah, notes. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so then we did, of course, a lot of skits, a lot of um using her little stuffed animals for things that we couldn't or we didn't want to act out ourselves we used her little stuffed animals especially pavlov's dog that kept making appearances throughout the episodes we kind of you know uh <laughs> ring the bell like pavlov's bell you know and yeah. they just wrote themselves the the jokes and my daughter is just such a ham and she thought up all those things in fact the blooper videos show that we were just making it up as we went. We had a basic outline of what we were gonna cover. Um, like Freud, I'd learn Jung, that particular one. We had the basics of what we wanted to cover and we had all the stuff out, the props and whatever costumes we needed for each thing. And then we just ad-libbed it. And if we forgot what we were saying, we just, you know, re-recorded it. But it internalized those things like id ego super ego we stopped and we were like okay how do we how do we say this and she would tell me and then you know so so um this internalizes it it's very hands-on um we made a colorful chart of maslow's um you know needs and then tried to you know have some sort of a prop to represent each one um because you need your basic needs met before you can have your higher needs met, which, um, you know, a lot of people who uh, make a, a living on uh, not enough money, for example, and they don't know when their next meal is going to come or whatever, it's harder t for them to go to higher levels of um, fulfillment and stuff. And it is true. So um, anyways, and I gave some practical ways to overcome that on my blog. Um, uh, anyway, and then we, we did a perception activity, which uh, was super fun. We, um, in my backyard, I had, I had Rachel, um, Rachel's my 14-year-old my daughter, 
she was pretending to run and so I snapped a whole bunch of pictures with her running and then she drew a cartoon of a car coming in a tunnel and then we cut her and it, the perception okay so one of the chapters was about perception how we perceive things which it goes with one of your other questions you just asked about why to teach psychology um a lot of times we perceive things based on our past experiences and stuff it's not just the facts if you um if you have some some let's say a crime is committed and there's different people around in different perspectives they'll see different things and they'll they'll notice different things based on what um, like if you have forensic information, you'll see things that you don't, you, another, another person who doesn't have that information wouldn't see. Um, and it, I mean, you know this by watching shows on TV and stuff about, you know, um, crime analysis and stuff like that and witnesses that sometimes say opposite things, but they're both telling the truth based on what they saw. Right. Um, so anyways, um, so, so perception can be skewed or um or different and that this causes us, us to have humility um in our christian lives um well anybody can have humility but um but truly you can um understand that your perception might be wrong and so to listen to someone else's perception of something um then you will have greater understanding and wisdom and and you know in your relationships and things like that so um another perception activity oh yeah but it makes sure i think we, so you cut off the you talked about the the tunnel or the train and then the cut out of her but i never heard the ending part of that what oh. did y'all do with the project um wait well um that was the the project was to see uh, okay so the it's a it's a distorted perception oh, i wish i had it's in the other room i don't want to leave okay. to, to show you that um it looks like she's running away from the car and it's gotcha. hilarious gotcha and um and and the the size of 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 her is different than the size of this and and also um the perception of the you know how lines going this direction makes it look like it's going further into the distance um if it's like an illusion a lot of times we have an illusion of um of something uh, because we preconceive like when someone tells us something if we think that they're going to say a certain thing or we think that they believe something against us then then we're um we're we're even though they say the same words, we will we think hear something worse different. about it because we think that they think badly about us. And so it's a almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You always, if you, if you try to think best about the other person, then you're responding in a better way. And then it, it, it has a positive cycle going upward, you know? Wow. So we've had such deep conversations um, because of this. And we sometimes go off and spend way more time in a deep conversation um, about it than the lesson itself. <laughs> so. But the rabbit trails are the point, right? Doesn't matter yes. Chesterton said, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, please continue. I'm sorry for interrupting your train of thought earlier. Oh. I just had I I'm, I uh, probably missed the end of the story. Sure. Uh, well, like we did another perception activity about the um, the tongue and the different, um, like a tongue map. Uh, we we decided we invented this this huge poster that was a huge tongue, and um, it was funny because we were messing around and just like, <laughs> it was a huge tongue. <laughs> Anyways, some of that has been debunked because you can taste in the entire tongue, but there's some flavors like uh, sweet is better tasted at the tip than the rest of it. Even though you do taste it everywhere, there's some uh, places on the, the tongue that you can um, perceive different flavors better than others. And um, so- Interesting. Was, uh, oh, last year, my daughter read this fascinating book. It was called First Bite. And it's actually a book all about the psychology of how we perceive taste and how much memory has to do with 
how two people will eat the same thing, but if they have different experiences or memories, they'll actually taste it differently. Wow. And so, yeah, it was super fascinating. She just really got into that. So maybe oh. add that to your book list. Yeah, really. So, yeah, um, we did so many skits. Um, and then some. sometimes we used um, costumes. I have a whole closet full of costumes, which I'm sure you're not surprised. Um, and, and so she went through like the history of psychology with different costumes for each time period. So we just set out all the different costumes and then she would put them on and she would summarize. She would ad lib. It was like a verbal summary, like Charlotte Na uh, Mason narration, you know, so. I love that. And really by her almost having to like teach it back to you or teach it back in the skits. She's really solidifying what she learned and kind of demonstrating to you too, like a way in a way more fun way than a test. <laughs> yeah, but she really knew. Absolutely. And actually, I haven't mentioned this, but I, we also did um, scripture all the way through all the books of the Bible. We did unit studies and that's part of the unit study treasure vault is that we brought to life everything with a lot of hands on stuff, but skits really internalize those stories and then they cause a lot of deep conversation that's wonderful because um you want to internalize um you know things that matter um and so that's that's one reason why we um you know try to understand and grapple with all the different issues including government and you know especially har harder subjects um if you can somehow come up with a skit or a fun way or something goofy to do with it, it really does help to change the, um, when you're, when you're having fun and you're excited about a topic, even for high school students, it, it changes the dynamic so that when they are studying the dry aspects of it, they have more oomph to do it, you know, even as an adult, we have to, you know, force ourselves to go through some of the stuff that we need to, to, to know, but it's, it's helpful if the majority is a joy, then the whole topic is a joy and all the others, it can all come, you know, together. So. I love that. That's really great. Well, what has been some of, I mean, obviously you love the hands-on and the creative part of the of education, the educational process, but has there been anything that sort of surprised you or that you've especially loved just about homeschooling teens and, you know, doing high school at home in general? Because I think sometimes people can be a little worried about that or it feels overwhelming. So as someone who's done it now several times, what have you loved about it? Yes, you should not be worried about it whatsoever. Um, in fact, there are some, um, like math, for example, there's some math programs that teach themselves, like teaching textbooks is what we've used all the way to pre-calculus. So I never took pre-calculus, but I'm fine with them going beyond me. In fact, that's one, one of the things that I love is that they've gone beyond me in a lot of ways. Um, they've also taught themselves things, like my third son, who I'm still homeschooling, he taught himself how to do computer programming and then because my husband knows how whenever he got stuck he would ask my husband so i had nothing to do with it and he's you know doing that and it's just it's wonderful when when you create a culture of learning in your home that learning is a delight then they go off and learn um things that they're excited about themselves and they don't want to waste all their time on computer games and stuff i mean it is it is easy especially in this quarantine that we're in right now for any free time to be used up with you know computer games or whatever that's what teens kind of do nowadays but um they want to do things that matter because of our conversations that have been so deep like we watched a movie together and then afterwards we we're grappling the um the storyline and um and the the historical war that was going on at the time and because our whole family has gone through all these things together all of our all of their lives um they were able to um bring in what we did for economics and bring in what we did for you know what we studied history and so all these different things and it's just 
it, it's, it's such a rich, deep, um, interesting, their, their, their minds, their minds are beautiful. Um, I love the mature uh, way that they have grown up into um, these beautiful people that have minds of their own. And I'll stop and listen to what they're saying. And sometimes I'll change what I'm thinking based on what they just told me. And because they back it up with really good, uh, solid, you know, uh, information to form their conclusion. And it's better than what I was previously thinking. So imagine, it's funny, because the tables are turned. So I taught them to think. And, um, and I love it. And it, it's, I'm never, I always loved it when they asked hard questions, especially about spiritual things. I would be delighted that I never thought about something. Let's dive in together. And then I, I would pray that God would help me to understand, you know, and then, and then we would discover delightfully something new about God or whatever, you know? Um, so I, I just, I love what, who my kids have grown into being. I also love that um, we were going for a walk the other day and my, my three sons, they, um, they ask each other for, um, like they lean on each other and they honor each other. Each one has different gifts. I mean, this goes back to psychology. They, they have different strengths and weaknesses. And so, um, and so if they, if they're having, they're, they're having a problem with statistics or something like that. Um, my, my oldest son was asking my third son about it because my, my third son taught himself calculus on his own before taking pre-calculus this year. I know, mind blown. And then my second son, who's in college, was having problems with calculus, asked his younger brother, his younger brother helped him with his college work, and he's still homeschooling high school and um and then you know and then you know my second son can ask my older son and they all they have conversations at the um at the table for dinner that are like way over my head like mind blown like a lot either that or it's so goofy and silly <laughs> yes <laughs> but I just love being with them. They're beautiful people and they serve other people. I'm, I, you know, and I, I see them, you know, sharing their faith, uh, even online. I, I see them like my third son was running the sound system for uh, the youth group at our church for years, like four years, you know, before the quarantine and everything. Um, and so they, they, um, they care about other people. They, um, they immediately come and help and give their time to each other or to friends or whoever. Um, and I just, I love that. I mean, it brings me to tears because, you know, that as parents, that's what we want. You know, we've gone through, uh, when you pray for them all these years, you pour into them all these years. And then now I'm seeing the, the fruit of it. And, homeschooling is worth it and it's worth it to teach high school like i hated government to be honest you wouldn't you couldn't tell by the videos that we did that were silly and um but um but i do i dove in um and because um i was excited about it <laughs> even when i didn't like what i was teaching modern history i hated modern history in school but we also did fun hands-on activities. And so I enjoyed it because when we brought it to life, you know, it, it, it was happy. Like we did themed um, birthday parties like 1970s, 1920s, you know, the roaring 20s. And, and so we lived all these things as, their as they were teenagers. And so that's all hands-on, um, you know, and you can find a lot of that on my um, YouTube channel, but also a, a lot of it is in my unit study treasure vault. So, yeah, 
I love hearing moms who have who are have come through some of it. I know you're still there with homeschooling high school, and I love hearing the enthusiasm that moms will share that it is worth it. Like you said, homeschooling is worth it. It's worth it to do yeah. through high school, and it's not always easy or fun. And our children are sinners, and we're sinners. And sometimes I'm not sure which makes it harder, probably my sin, <laughs> but to see, but to see God's faithfulness in the midst of that. And to even have those times where you're like, you are your own person. I didn't put those ideas in your head. You might even think differently, but I see the man and the woman that God is, is growing my own children into. And it's really exciting to just stand back and kind of see what God's doing in their lives and in their hearts. And just to think, I'm going to enjoy having you guys around as like grown-ups one day. I can't wait to have everybody back and have great big conversations again and be able to share the memories of all these fun times that we've had together too in the homeschool years. It's a really precious gift. Well, Susan, where can people find you online? They can at SusanEvans.org. So SusanEvans.org. And there you can find all my social media, um, my YouTube channel, I have um, over 2 million views on my YouTube channel, um, like just 4,000 subscribers or something like that. But uh, uh, so that's Susan C. Evans, um, if you're looking at, you know, looking me up on YouTube. So Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing these stories. I know this is going to be exciting and encouraging for many moms. And Maybe they'll all start dressing in costumes and tagging you on social media. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Have a good afternoon.